This continent is at the crucial point where there's more potential for development, more potential for economic growth and also global integration. But then, there is still the need for a unified system that will ensure that there is economic growth, that will ensure that we encourage innovations and also ensure that there is sustainable development across the continent. But the question is, how do we achieve that? You're welcome to another exciting episode of AAU Talks brought to you by the Association of African Universities. My name is Isabella Tete Ahinakwa, the sitting host for this episode. And today we are diving into an important topic that is standardization and harmonization for Africa's integration. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, I'll introduce our guest to you and then start with the discussion. Please stay tuned. You welcome back from the break. If you just tuned in, this is AAU Talks on AAU TV and it is brought to you by the Association of African Universities. And just as I mentioned before the break, today's episode we are going to discuss standardization and harmonization for Africa's integration. And we are joined here by Dr. Hermogini Nsengimana, the Secretary General and also Professor Alex Dodu who is the president for the African Organization for Standardization, ASO. They will be exploring some of the initiatives and also strategies that have been implemented to ensure that there is integration in Africa. Hello, Prof. and Doc. You're welcome Hi. to AE Talks. Hi. Hi. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for today. Thank you for having us. Great. Now, I mentioned you are the Secretary General for ASU and also you are the President for ASU. But before we dive into today's discussion, I'd like you to briefly tell us more about yourself, starting from you. Um, as you said, I'm um, Dr. Mojen Sengimana, Secretary General of African Organization okay. for Standardization uh, since 2012. Okay. Uh, before then, I was a senior lecturer at the University of Rwanda. Okay. Yeah. I am uh, a chemist, mm -hmm. analytical and environmental chemist. Right. You're welcome. Thank you. And Prof? My name is Professor Alex Jodu. I'm the Director General for the Ghana Standards Authority mm -hmm. and the President for the African Organization for Standardization. Mm -hmm. um, I hold the position from 2022 to 2025. Um, I live and work in Ghana. I, my previous job was with the University of Ghana Medical School mm -hmm. where I was at an Associate Professor in Clinical Pharmacology. All right, you, you both welcome to it. Thank you. Thank now, uh, let's discuss or let's talk about ASU. When you go to the website, uh, I see that your main aim is to promote intra-African and also international trade as well as enhance industrialization in Africa. But then if you can share with us some of your mission and values and also vision for ASU and also what is the history behind the establishment of the organization? Uh, Maybe I start with the history. Okay. Uh, uh, ARZO was founded by African Union. It was OAU in 1977. Okay. Yeah, together with uh, Economical Commission for Africa, UN, UN Economical Commission for Africa. I, if you look at 1977, you know we were coming from colonization mm -hmm. in many countries. Then uh, our head of state, actually decided that yes we are liberated uh, politically mm. but we should unite and grow economically yeah it, that's actually the basis of uh, all standardization bodies mm -hmm. yeah at national level at continental level even international level we b b b standards are there to help trade mm -hmm. standards are there to help increase safety of our product protect our consumers and protect our environment. That's that's how ours was started. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are given a mandate for harmonization of standards and harmonization of conformity assessment. Mm -hmm. a, our mission is to harmonize the standard, harmonize also conformity assessment for increased trade, mm -hmm. mainly in Africa and global, industrialization mm -hmm. and sustainable development okay. yeah that is the main main, main mission, mission right. yeah. 
Prof, would you add something to it? Well, I think essentially it also brings together the national standards authorities or mm. the national standards boards mm. of all African countries. Mm. And um, as the Secretary General said, it's an AU organization who represent the African Union on all things standards. Mm. Now, um, looking at our development journey, especially Africa, I see there is potential for growth and also economic growth. But then there are some factors or key issues that are, that is preventing us, specifically for Africa's integration. Let's share some of it. Let's look at it from the educational level. I would say um, disparities between uh, the education system, even when it comes to the national level, when you when you look at the educational system in the urban area, it's far different from that from the rural um, area. What what do you think is some of the key issues that is affected or that is preventing us from Africa's integration? From the educational sector, I mean, if you look at it from preschool mm. right to the tertiary level, the the biggest challenge we are facing actually has to be financial. Okay. Financial in the sense that mm. access to education is always going to be based on money. In Ghana, we have been lucky to have free senior high school or free education from preschool mm. all the way to the tertiary level where you pay. But then parents cannot afford it, students cannot afford it. Mm. And then, of course, you talk about the differences in the curriculum, even within the same country. Yeah. Some are running UK curriculum, US curriculum, and then the national curriculum. Then across countries, mm. the Francophones have the years, the Anglophone have the years. Mm. But I think we are a young continent, a continent that should be singing from the same book. Yeah. That should also be offering education that is relevant to the African child. What is our place as West Africans, as Africans? How can we influence the world in which we live in? I mean, the education our parents had, or even my generation had, should be different from the education we now give the young generation okay. who are more tech savvy, tech savvy mm. who probably don't need to sit in the classroom or don't want to sit in the classroom and yet they need education yeah. and we need to have that conversation with them mm. not to them we t we tend to talk to them rather than listening to them yeah. and finding out how to create their world themselves Doc? yeah w w when you look at it it's all uh, yes the finance as what president said uh, how do we make sure that the families get the CDs mm. uh, or <laughs> in their pocket. Yeah, yeah we, we, that, that's why I link everything to standards. Mm. Yeah, because if we can help our SMEs mm. down there to get the money, mm -hmm. yeah, they will be the one actually building schools. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we will not be sitting in different areas on stones. Or, or yep. below a tree, yeah. yeah. It it's all really depends on how much get into, into our pocket, pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can do that if we help that farmer, mm -hmm. that farmer on share, that farmer on cocoa to get the value of their product. Mm -hmm. The value of their products will depends on what we do as the standards people. How do we I I uh, implement the standards? and impact on the value addition of the whole process. Mm. Instead of selling tomatoes, we sell tomato paste. <laughs> yeah, that, that is very important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we move to the, um, the how do you implement the standardization, mm -hmm. let's talk about the key factors. So by this time, let's look at um, the trade level. Mm -hmm. I would say language barrier, because mm -hmm. what we speak here is far different from what someone in in South Africa, they speak Swahili, mm -hmm. right? There's this mm -hmm. language barrier. And I think it also a uh, factor that is preventing Africa's integration. What's your take on that, Doc? It's, it's a very strange thing that when you really, I, I think about these languages that uh, French is not coming from any country <laughs> on the continent, <laughs> English, Portuguese, uh, Spanish, mm -hmm. and so on. It, but we have we have also our own languages mm. that are also many. Mm. But I always say we need to find the center of where we gravitate. Okay. That's why I said if we increase our economy, mm. economical power, yeah, because the traders, historically traders, what are the goods? The goods can talk to each other, okay. yeah, without even speaking. Yeah. yeah, I bring you quality product then we will find a way. Yeah. Where Swahili came from? Yeah. Swahili is like in between our traders who were coming from Asia 
coming to Africa. Okay. Yeah, and it's a language that uh, was bridging those traders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can manage to have something to trade, yeah, I think those borders will be mm -hmm. broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if a product from Ghana can go to Rwanda, a product from Rwanda can go to South Africa, go to Egypt, and without any any problem like what we deal with on testing, mm. yeah, a product water is being retested. Imagine if fifty five countries retesting your product, how much that product will cost mm. at the end of the day. I think we need products to trade on, and the issue of language will just uh, go away. Well, okay, yeah. Prof, what other key issue do you think is affecting Africa's integration in terms of trade? I think you, you use the, the word language, and I'll use the language in a different context. Okay. Secretary General has explained that for us, we always say that the language of, bus the language of business is standards. Okay. Because what you buy and what you sell must be defined. Mm -hmm. And once it's clear and we are all using the same standard, then it's harmonized. But then at the, let's say, at the socio-political level, mm. you do see that the Anglophone countries tend to talk together. Mm. Yeah. And instead yeah. of talking amongst ourselves as Africans, we talk to each other and look at what the UK is doing. <laughs> and the Francophones do it, and they look at what France is doing, mm. which is a no-no. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe SG, maybe we need to start exploring and fantasizing again that in addition to the English and French, which are needed for global trade, we, we, we should be exploring having 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 Kiswahili probably yeah. as 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 a common language to link us all. I mean, mm. you in East Africa yeah. are lucky you, you have it. In West Africa, we have too many languages. Yeah. Maybe Hausa will mm. be a close yeah. a close second to uh, Kiswahili. I, I was watching a BBC talk. I think yesterday when they were saying. Uh, how many words from Japanese mm -hmm. language that are being included in the English mm -hmm. dictionary yeah. today. That's what we should mm -hmm. find exactly. out if we also talk about language. What, what, what if the Hausa, the Igbo, the Kinyarwanda, the Swahili, mm -hmm. we find a way of Having, having them, yeah, the commodity that we, we have our own dictionary. But it's always yeah. about trade. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah. it's always about trade because when you trade at a very high level, your words become part of social culture, part mm. of normal language. So, mm. yeah. ten years ago, cyber bullying, cyber this, cyber mm. that, mm. Korean K-pop, and and so on and so yeah. forth. Okay. But through trade, these things have been socialized. They've been normalized that we've all adopted mm. these new languages into mm. our lingua. Mm. I like how this program is bringing out ideas of what, like, ideas to integrate into what ASO is mm. doing. Now, let's look at your interventions and initiatives. What are some that have been implemented so far since the establishment? Yeah, we, we have now uh, 1,869 harmonized standards. Okay. Uh, we have different uh, conformity assessment schemes. But we, it, the most important, they are the se sectors that are high priorities. Okay. These sectors are linking to uh, the African continent of free trade mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. the priorities okay. for agriculture, mm -hmm. yeah, agro processing mainly. We have so many standards in that area because we are agri continent. Mm -hmm. We have pharmaceuticals, okay. yeah, that is very important to mention that we do um, so much on Africa traditional medicine medicines. because you need to have this viral chain, Africa traditional medicine entering mm. the pharmaceutical industry. We have automotive, okay. which you cannot develop yeah. without automotive industry because looking at the auto as a vehicle, mm -hmm. it's include many viral chain, it's crude textile. The internal design. Mm. It's screwed our metals, mm -hmm. copper for wiring, electricity, mm -hmm. rubber. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's a lot of things as automotive mm -hmm. industry. Then transportation and logistics. Mm. Those are the key areas that where are which are priority for the Africa continent of free trade area. That's we are also focusing on. But uh, I would not. Uh, finish without mentioning the standards we are doing on body measurement. Mm. Yes. Yeah. If you look at currently, you, you have the materials like Ghana materials, mm. Togolese materials, mm -hmm. 
but you need to go to a tailor every time. Mm -hmm. That you take measurement, you are losing time, and they are also waiting for someone to come in. Mm -hmm. We need to move to ready-made mm -hmm. clothing. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the clothes, you can find Chinese measurement, Europe measurement, American UK measurement, measurement. American measurement. Yes. We need African measurement. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. From, from the north to the south, we don't look alike. We yeah. are not the same. Yeah. Yeah, you go to a shop even in Europe, if you just take medium and you are rushing to airport, mm. you might come and it's not fitting you. <laughs> yeah, we, we need, we need, we are doing that. It's a okay. standard that I am looking forward okay. to see it finished. Great, yeah. great. Um, I would mm. want you to touch on that, but then we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. Please stay tuned. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. Stay tuned. Explore a whole new world of exciting visuals with AAU TV. Get ready for a mix of interesting talk shows, interviews, discovery documentaries, and news on AAU TV. It's not just about watching TV, it's about experiencing something special. AAU TV reaches over 25 countries in Africa, bringing you a blend of knowledge and fun. Learn about different cultures as you enjoy the shows. If you have events or want to showcase your business, we've got you covered. Watch AAU TV free to air channel on satellite. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter, at AAU TV. Reach out on call or WhatsApp us at plus 233 or plus 233 Three nine nine five two one zero, AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Welcome back from the break. If you just tuned in, this is AAU Talks, and today we are discussing standardization and harmonization for Africa's integration. And we are joined here by Dr. Ermogini Nsengimana, who is the SG, and also Professor Alex Dodu, the president for ALSO. Hello, Prof. And Doc. Thank you, Hi. Thank you for mm -hmm. sticking with us. Um, now, before we went for the break, we were discussing some of your initiatives and also interventions. Um, if you'd like to touch or give us more um, info on that. I'll, I'll touch on two. I Thank mean, you. the Secretary General, my Secretary General, made a comment, made, made extensive discussion on body measurements. Mm. I mean, isn't it? I mean, interesting that we do not have measurements for Africans, men or it women. Is. It is. And so, the African Standards Organization has taken that as a key activity. Okay. That, as standards experts, we are going to come up with a consensus document, mm. a standard on measurement mm -hmm. within Africa. So that if you're in the fabric sector, if you're within, or if you're producing a smoke, whether it's medium, large, or by numbers, mm -hmm. you know, looking at, especially with our females, with different, I mean, different busts and other sizes, so that when you state it and you put the A there, you know that this refers to the African, to the African yeah, body, yeah. to the African <laughs> size. And, yeah. and, and that should actually help us in trading on our fabrics, both locally, nationally, yeah. and internationally. We've also agreed on standards for cocoa. Mm. Okay. Right. And the cocoa standard series, which we call the ASOTA 1000 series, are being used not just across Africa, but across the world. Mm. And this development was led by Ghana Cote d'Ivoire under the coordination of ASO. And um, as we speak, uh -huh. uh, the Secretary General has brought over 130 experts from across Africa to Ghana, and mm. we are discussing cocoa, cassava, and wow. other issues wow. to do with Africa. Wow, that is great. So this, 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 these are big initiatives. Mm. Um, we are, we haven't left, left it there alone. Mm. We're actually discussing standards in education, and I'm sure Secretary General mm. may tell you the work mm. we are doing now mm. in um, having standards for research management in Africa. Yeah. Great, mm. great. We, great. we, we have uh, uh, a committee happening now, a technical mm. committee. 
developing the standard of all good research management mm, practice mm. that was actually demanded the new work uh, for that standard was demanded mm. by the universities especially the the african uh, 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 science foundation we have done a standard on a good financial grant practice mm. that was demanded by african academy for for science if you look at like the good financial grant practice you you know you know small and medium enterprises you you can have a good project you want a grant mm -hmm. they give you the grant mm. but the trust that you will use that money mm -hmm. for the purpose it, it's not there yeah, yeah. but that standard is certifiable okay. you can be certified mm -hmm. as SMEs that you you are using good practices because it has financial management, mm. it has human resources component, it has procurement mm. component, and it has also governance issue. We found out you go to business in our rural areas, and it's even at university, if you want to, to have a research grant. Mm. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you are given the money, probably you start uh, feeling I am poor, I can buy yeah. something <laughs> around <laughs> yeah, be, before you even implement, implement yeah. the project. Yeah, but the, the most important, the, the issues of sustainability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a technical committee here. Mm. Uh, Le, uh, is our technical committee 61, we call it 61, okay. on sustainability mm -hmm. standards. Mm. And you know, like the EU, the forestation regulation mm, mm, that is coming mm. that will impact on our product okay. cocoa coffee timber uh, beef wood mm. rubber and so on we, we need to showcase that we have a standard that can help our businesses uh, showcase that they produce sustainable mm, goods mm. i'm happy you even touched on education because my next question is about the role of education in standardization and harmonization in your perspective what do you think the educational field can do the most critical mm. the most critical in fact we see education as so important that the, the african organization for standardization also we have an also essay competition it's a competition. Yeah, it's a no. competition every year. It runs no. both at the national and continental level mm. for students to submit their essays because we are trying to social market the concept of standardization no. right at, from birth mm -hmm. because that, that is what it's all about. What What is this year's theme? Because we give a theme. It is an education, actually. Oh, the theme yeah, is on education. Yeah, <laughs> because the, the theme of the African, African Union, Union is on education. Right. We always go with the theme yeah, of African right. Union. Okay. And we, 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 we actually uh, award the best three at continental level mm. and the countries also award the, the best, best three, three okay. yeah at national level okay. I, I think even our 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 close partnership will lead to increased uh, adoption of adoption standards, standards <laughs> mm. increased uh, level of awareness at uh, the high school but i would also like to mention that standards are based on science Okay. Those experts who are sitting here, they are from, the they are from universities. <laughs> yeah, they are from research yeah. centers. Mm, yeah. Mm. Without actually educated data, people, yeah. we cannot do anything. We cannot mm. do anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's very yeah. true. Now let's look at your partners in ensuring that these initiatives are implemented. Who are you partnering with, and what are their roles? I I want to start with uh, the the. Association of African, African <laughs> Universities. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the discussion we had yesterday with the Secretary mm. General was very important. Uh, you know, we conduct webinars every month that we agreed that we'll have a, a talk every month yes, that is, is uh, linking standards and education and other okay. issues. We have uh, unusual partners, which are the banks. Okay. Yeah, I would like to mention the AFDB, Africa Development Bank, that is supporting areas Agri of agriculture. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, it's the one that supported this meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Flexim, a Flexim Bank, bank. Mm -hmm. that is an, a bank for export and import. Mm -hmm. 
because yeah. you cannot export if you don't conform to the standards. Yeah. Uh, we have PTB, which is a German institution mm -hmm. yeah, for metrology that has supported ARZO since uh, conception of ARZO, okay. uh, German government. I, 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 those are really key. And we are exploring more. Uh, we have UNECA, that <laughs> is our funding member. We, we are an African Union mm -hmm. body, but mm -hmm. most also importantly under the AFCFTA agreement. Mm -hmm. ARZO standards are the one that should be used. Mm -hmm. And we have MOU with uh, AFCFTA. Mm -hmm. We have ISO, mm -hmm. International Standard mm -hmm. Organization. Mm -hmm. It's a list that we cannot have finish. A list. That's <laughs> yeah. great. But yeah. I think within the list, and, and this is where you want the African experts, mm, yeah. individuals in Africa and their mm. respective areas, mm -hmm. come to support us. Yes. And African governments, in fact, our governments fund our daily work mm. and daily yeah. routine, mm. and they provide a platform whereby we can talk to each other. This morning, we've had a meeting with Coco Board, with the senior management, and it's been very interactive. Mm. I think we want the African to believe that we can do it in africa yeah, we can we surely can now what are some of the challenges you face so far implementation of standards mm. implementation i can repeat it many times <laughs> yeah. implementation yes implement implementation because standards are there i talked about a number 1800 mm. something mm. but we should implement the okay. standards yeah, yeah. It's like having a book and you don't read that book. Yeah, we need to implement standards. Mm. That's the most important thing. The second is that our governments, our governments, because we are intergovernment organization, should contribute, pay their membership. That is how we can keep up with the needs of the private sector because we are there to serve the private sector, to serve the industry, mm. to serve the cocoa mm -hmm. farmers. Mm -hmm. to, uh, we, we should provide those solutions. Those are the most potent mm -hmm. ones that I see currently. Mm -hmm. And Prof, any challenges so far? Like you said, we want ownership from governments. Mm. You know, within Africa, you hear the saying a lot that we don't have standards. And it's not true. <laughs> we do have standards, but we do not implement and use those standards. Mm -hmm. And it's a mindset change. Our appeal, really, is that come a year's time, come five years' time, the African child, the African student, the African teacher, the African elder is talking to each other using the same standards okay. so that when you see us, you know that we are one. Okay. Now, since implementing the standards are, is a challenge, um, is there a way or, ASU, or is there a way ASU is making ensuring that you monitor and also evaluate. Maybe there's a challenge mm -hmm. that is preventing them from implementing those challenge and um, those standardizations. We, 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 we evaluate. Okay. Yeah, we evaluate. The, the main issue that uh, we, we saw, yeah, is uh, duplication. Mm -hmm. Duplication, we have regional economical communities mm. that still also develop standards. It, it, I would say that the future should be that we look at the continental level what we have. Mm. And actually, that budget at regional economical community level help. That budget should be helping to implement those standards. Okay. Because otherwise, if you have three standards on the same product. Mm. Yeah, which one are you going to use? And we, we ratify those, those agreements. Yep. Yeah, countries have ratified the AFCFTA. The AFCFTA is a clear mm -hmm. agreement. Mm -hmm. International standards yeah. are also standards. standards. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the way to go. When we sign this policy document, we should have implementation mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, talking about the future, what are your future plans or the roadmap for the next five years? I mean, our roadmap is tied in with the vision of the African Union, the African Union Agenda 2063. Mm. In the next five years, we want to see African countries mm. all beginning to use the same ASO standards, which to the extent possible will be linked to international standards mm. so that Africa can be trading very well. We want the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement to lead to a lot of intra africa trade and we want that increase in trade mm. to be linked to the adoption of common standards mm. amongst us. Harmonized standards, mm. that's the word we use. Great. And you said you are linked with the African Union. So this year you are doing something on education, right? Yes. That's the AC. When is yeah. it happening? 
Uh, the the award will be in June mm -hmm. during our general assembly mm -hmm. uh, in Abuja. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Now I think this uh, this brings us to the end of today's episode. But before we end, I'd like to uh, hear your final words. My, my final word. I would like to see our continent applying what we call one 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 principle, mm -hmm. one that? standard. One test, okay. one certificate accepted everywhere. Okay. Mm. Great. <laughs> My final, final words is that I want us, I want to see an Africa where increase in traffic trade mm. has been driven by increased use of harmonized African standards to break barriers to trade mm. and ensure adoption and uptake of African products and services by African countries mm. for the benefit of Africans. Mm. Great. Thank you all for joining us today and we hope to meet again. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. This is the end of today's episode. If you just joined, today we discussed standardization and harmonization of Africa's integration. And we had here with us Dr. Helmogini Nsengimala, the SG for ASU, and also Professor Alex Dodu, who is the president of ASU. Indeed, Africa is about time we get a unified system that is going to ensure that our economic good keeps on developing and developing. My name is Isabella Sete Ahinakwa, and I was the sitting host for this episode. See you again in our next episode. Bye. Thank you.